All right, we're just getting things kicked off here. So uh, waiting for some people to show up and then we're going to jump right in. Yes, this is the Twitter space, man. We uh, we get we get pretty good turnout to these. So I'm excited to see who rolls through. Uh, really excited to have you on the show and uh, really looking forward to asking you some questions about how to grow your personal brand and, and sign some clients through Twitter spaces. So thank you so much for uh, being on the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, dude. I, uh, I'm excited. I find a link finally. I was I was scrambling, but I found it. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of weird. I I um I accidentally started one a little early last week, and, and it kind of messed some things up. So I'm glad this time went really smooth. So, um, anyways, everybody who's jumping in right now, uh, if you don't know J.K. Molina, uh, he has a SaaS company, and then also helps people build their personal brands on Twitter. Uh, we we typically do more of like an AMA style here. So you can ask him any questions that you have, and then I'm going to ask him questions too. So if you ever want to jump in and ask a question, just raise your hand um, and you'll you'll know exactly what to, you know, to ask. So JK, um, I just want to kick things off here and give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and, and share what you do and, and why you do it. Hey man, thank you. What's up everyone? I'm JK Molina, uh, founder of Tweet Hunter, which is a company making around 1.5 mil a year that we've built with a few friends here on Twitter. And I run the Tweets and Clients coaching program where we take agency owners and coaches to 30K and then 100K a month. And I just kind of, I'm addicted to Twitter, really like the tool and I like helping other people who want to really use this to build a personal brand that kind of makes business easier forever once you have it. So here to help you guys with anything you guys want and happy to be here. Thanks for the intro, man. And, um, you know, well, well, I think one of my first questions for you when it comes to Twitter, because I, sure, I, I know a lot of people who are listening to this and will be listening on the pod and elsewhere, they want to grow on Twitter. They want to grow on social. And I think maybe 0.001% of them have hit over 100,000 followers on any of their platforms. So my very first question for you is, what did that growth look like over the years? Because unlike with tools like Ahrefs or SEMrush, where you could see historical growth rate, it's really difficult to know like how somebody's growth trended over time. So for you, when it comes to follower growth, did it happen all at once? Did it like kind of happen linearly, like over time, just a little bit more every year? Or what was the trend? Yes and no. In the beginning, nothing really happens. There's a really good quote by Coley Mill Wizard that I like. Shout out. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, nothing happens for the longest time, and then you win all at once. Right. So Twitter doesn't really work, maybe linearly, or sometimes it doesn't even work exponentially. Twitter works more in jumps. Mm. So your tweets don't really do very well, but then you write one that goes incredibly viral. Yeah. Or you write a thread or an auto or a DM or an auto DM, which as of today are two of the highest performing pieces of content right just in general right so what i what i really tell people is try to focus on the things that are most likely to go viral right which are usually threats mm. and yeah that's kind of how it works it's not linearly or exponentially it works in jumps very interesting and you've been at this since when when, when did you get started on the twitter uh posting and stuff april 2020 Wow. So really, really recently, that's, it, it, didn't, it was like a cold start. You didn't have an audience before. It was just jumped in, right, with Twitter. Nah, I, I had like two followers, maybe <laughs> some friend and, and, a, and my uncle, because I created a Twitter when it was cool. Right. In 20, what was it, like 2013? Right. You know, and <laughs> nobody really used it. I just created one to be yeah. cool. But I never used it. So a lot of people um, want to know sort of like what's the recipe or skill set that you know, would have allowed you to grow that quickly? Do you think it was really good timing? Do you think it was maybe you're an incredible writer? Like what, what skill sets do you think really helped you um, with that kind of growth? You asked this at a good time because I was actually thinking about that <laughs> like, uh, like yesterday or something. And by the way, guys, this is scripted. Like he, this has actually happened. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I, I was writing uh, about fundamentals, right? Mm -hmm. Because... For me, like that's, I don't know, it's just super important always. I recently went to this big jiu-jitsu tournament, ADCC in, in Las Vegas, super cool. Right. And there were two types of fighters. There were the fighters that are, were very like flashy. They did a lot of cool moves. 
And then there were the fighters that were very conservative, a lot of fundamentals, a lot of basics. And the guys with the fundamentals completely destroyed the competition. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. even close. Right. And and some dude, Lobo, he, he told me, in the beginning, you learn the fundamentals mm-hmm. and then you test them. Then you see where the fundamentals go wrong. Mm. And then you realize that all you needed were fundamentals. Right. So I was thinking, oh, what are the Twitter fundamentals? Which leads me to answer the question. There were I came up with three, mm-hmm. right? And uh, for me, the biggest three are the first one is the first one's managing your expectations. Mm. So, for example, you go on a flight, right? And the guys tell you that the flight is gonna be like the flight's two hours. Like that's how much you're gonna fly. And right, the guys tell you. Like in the plane, they tell you, well, it's going to be one hour. Well, then you're going to be pissed for an hour because you're not there. Yeah. But if they tell you it's going to be 12 hours, then it's not so bad. You're going to be super right. happy when you get there before. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. So some of my best content advice that I received is just post and assume that nobody will see it. Mm. That'll teach you detachment, patience. So that's right. very useful for me. Right. Uh, for me, that's fundamental one. There's an other two if you want to get into them. Yeah, no, I'd love to hear them. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, that's one. Second one is uh, adherence. So, like, you want to you you want to learn to like you want you want an audience, right? And you want to land clients. That's cool. And anybody can land clients, but it's better. The only thing that's better than landing clients in this sense is becoming the kind of person who can land clients repeatedly. Mm. Yeah. Right. So for me, it's all about like skill. So in the beginning, you start doing a bunch of things, right? And you were very like intense. When people yeah. start on Twitter, they go intense. I'm like, dude, I'm going to write a thread a day. I'm going to send 50 DMs a day. I'm just going to repurpose everything. And they do that for like a week. <laughs> yeah. And then they just stop. Yeah. In the end, I feel like we focus too much on like intensity instead of adherence. When if you look up over a longer enough time frame, people that want on Twitter, it's just that they're not like better at content than you specifically. Or, like a lot of the tweets you see from big accounts are actually kind of basic. It's yeah. that they just stuck for it way, way longer. Like yeah. nobody who started with us in 2020 like there was like the click, right? Like the 2020 gang and we all started together. We're all we're like friends. There's nobody right now who isn't making good money mm. because we just kept at it. Like we just never stopped. Right. We just never stopped. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're, That's the move. It's automatically impossible, you know? Yeah, that is the move. And I think, you know, I think one reason people get discouraged though and um, is, you know, there's a lot of algorithm changes, a lot of algorithm updates and people think like, what was working one day is no longer working the other day. Do I need to change my strategy? If you had to distill it down to a recipe of like a posting schedule, um, what would you tell people to do? And I'm curious what your take also on this is on, on giveaways, because uh, I personally had a lot of success with those, but I was kind of scared because I was like, if I keep doing this, is this going to cause any issues with my account? I don't know. Cause I was just giving away so much value, but I don't know what Twitter thought of like giveaways and I don't really know. So I was kind of confused. But I'm curious, like for the people listening and as well as myself, is there like a recipe that you would say, okay, try to follow maybe one, uh, you know, post per day, uh, that's a thread, uh, and then like four, you know, maybe non-threads. Or is there a recipe that you typically follow? I could, yeah. And I could give you, I could give you the one. And be, I'll, I'll give you the one, yeah, for sure. But yeah. disclaimer before this is this might not be relevant in a month. Because that's just how the game is played. Like it, a lot of stuff changes. Like when I started, it, the game was a little bit different. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you what works now. What yeah. I tell people to do now is do at least two tweets a day. Prove your competence, which is basically showing results you've got for the people you work with, or that you've already accomplished. That prove that you're good at what you do at least three times a week. Mm. There could be a case study, a testimonial, a transformation picture, A to B, like stuff that shows that you're legit. Yeah. Uh, dude, I said two tweets today. Did I say that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's the minimum. 
Okay, we actually tested at the agency to send ten tweets a day versus like three, and nothing changed. This is the three. Okay, <laughs> it's good to so, know. Yeah, and uh, I would say again because Twitter works in jumps, you should focus on the things that have the light, the highest likelihood of you getting those jumps, which is at the time of recording this, September twenty twenty two. 22, yeah, 22, right, right, is um, is threads mm-hmm. or auto DMs. So if you don't yeah. know what a thread is, it's a tweet connected to another tweet. So basically, like a tweet blog post. Mm. And an auto DM is if somebody engages with your tweets, the software will auto DM them something. So hey guys, like this, and I'll send you my guy. Like this, and I'll send you a link. Right. So those are the highest ones, and. And yeah, so content wise, I feel like those those are the highest ones. Oh, and um, Russell Bronson calls this the Dream One Hundred, which yeah. is just collecting a hundred people who have the audience you want, right? And then just engaging with them. Mm-hmm. So if you want, to, I can go over like what I tell people to yeah. engage with. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So for me, there's uh, three guidelines. So number one is treat it like if it were a giant group chat. So don't say anything you wouldn't say like at the dinner table. Right. Because <laughs> people, people say just different, I don't know, it's just, people say stuff that they, it's just not human. Like, right. For example, like, I tell people like, um, yeah, man, like the steak is good. And the comments will say something like, very good is the steak. Like, this, this, no, come on. Like, it's not good. Uh, yeah. Or, uh, so that's rule number one. Rule number, two, no, rule number two is a lie to that, which is don't be a weirdo. Right. We, right. You'd be surprised how many people do not follow that. <laughs> what would you say? Okay, let me ask you that. So, like, when you when you're talking about you know engaging with these people, what's the end uh, outcome? Like, is it is it to increase your engagement on your profiles, or is it to um, maybe form an alliance to like build up an email newsletter or try to get them on your show or get be on their show or what what is the for you? What's the goal of that? Is it is it just more exposure on your account or what? What specifically? It's two things. One is exactly that, which is digging your well before you're thirsty, getting the mm-hmm. connection before you need it. Right. So, for example, you and Jordan, you guys are my dream one hundred. <laughs> you know, Deuces. Busy. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm I'm talking to you guys, right? Because we're building this thing. So it's yeah. That and. People are more likely to reciprocate and do something for you if they seen your face already. So if you're engaging with it, that kind of builds that connection. Yeah. And two is because they have the audience you want. Right. Like when people go on a tweet and you know how on YouTube, when you click on a video, sometimes you don't watch the video and you read the comments instead. Yeah. So same thing here. People see a tweet, they see the comments and you've said something. And this is actually rule number three. If you said something that makes the reader smarter, mm. makes them money, makes them laugh, or you ask an intelligent question, you'll get likes. Mm. And then if you get likes, you go to the top. If you go to the top, you get the exposure from all these Dream 100. So it serves both purposes. It serves the right. purpose of getting alliances and connections and also uh, getting your dream audience to follow you. Right. Well, I do also want to ask about, I know I kind of alluded to it, but I do want to ask about giveaways because a lot of people try giveaways and they're actually pretty successful with it. And I'm just curious, I know you said like you add the guide to your thread and and you mentioned doing like two pieces of case studies and also one thread per day is if I understood that correctly. Uh, and then, but the, the idea with the, the giveaways, I, I mean, is that something that's still relevant? Like, should somebody be doing like uh, com- like retweet, comment, you know, share with a friend uh, if you want this guide and I'll send it to you. Should they be doing that like once a week or is that like damaging for a brand to do consistently? Like what's your takes? I don't know, honestly. And I think a lot of people are curious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, it's not a thread a day. Oh, okay. That would drive you. That would drive you drive insane. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot. Yeah, it's like two a week. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But is that the giveaway thread or is that like some other thread or is there a giveaway threads too? Or how do you approach it? No, a thread is different from a giveaway. And I feel like giveaway is the same as auto DM. Oh, okay. I feel like we're talking about these Yeah, things, same thing, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. But thread is different, right? Thread is right. a connection of tweets. Auto DM is should you do it? I, I, feel like, I feel like you should because it is a very good way to build up your email list. Yeah, 100%. Because you, 
when it's not that you're just giving the resource away, you're giving the link to get the resource. Yeah. So they go and engage with your tweet. You're not going to send them the free stuff. If you're smart, you'll send them an opt-in page. Right. And which they can leave their email. And so they'll get the resource. Right. Right. But do you, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is like, do you think about it as that structure of like, you know, I learned how to do this and then I want to share it with you guys, comment, retweet, share if you like want access uh, or like reply below, or do you just approach it like, here's a thread, 10, 12 principles on like how to grow your Twitter. And then at the very bottom, you comment like, uh, you know, retweet this thread if you want me to send it to you or like, or how do you, how do you structure that? Is it like a shorter thing or do you always do it as a thread where the giveaway is in the thread or is it always just like a single post where you say, retweet this if you want access to this. You see what I'm saying? Like the difference? You can combine it. Like, yeah. I feel like thread is a format of content. Well, like right. auto DM is in addition to the content. So they're yeah. not mutually exclusive. You could do both. Makes so sense. So we could talk about ways to combine it. With yeah. Testing. Yeah. That'd be super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So threads will never like run out of, we're not a fashion like threads are really good they're like they're getting, getting good engagement david perel actually was asked in an interview once he has three hundred thousand plus followers on twitter mm -hmm. he was asked what would you do if you had to do it all over again yeah and he said just i would just write threats <laughs> just with threats like oh well all right if you say it dude then i guess yeah it's a threat. So <laughs> but you could do so all sorts of interesting things because what you could do is you could write a thread mm -hmm. and in the end, right, you want people to share it. Most people just say, hey, please share this below. What you could do is say, hey, if you like this, you can share it. And if you share it, I'll send something as well. So then right. you combine those two. That, then it gets interesting. Very interesting. And and when it comes to, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the thread ratio, I guess, of success, because I know it's not a perfect science, but like you, you might have a sort of a ballpark ratio of like how many of them you define as a successful thread. Like, is it usually that if you're doing it right, you should be getting maybe one every three threads to really pop one every four or is it does it does it not work like that? Is it not like that systematic? Likes and cash. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I've actually been thinking that as so much since listening to that interview when you're on our pod. I've just been like <laughs> thinking about that phrase. Yeah. Well, did a thread work? Well, that's not something you can see on Twitter. Mm. Did the thread work? That's something you see in how many calls did you book or how many sales did you get? Right. And that's not even the most accurate thing because with organic growth, your conversion windows are usually long they can be long yeah so i've had people who followed me two years ago and they only bought from me today yeah so the intangibles yeah. are like kind of again like we talked about like the flight right it's, uh, like it's not that the thread did well or wrong it's right like it's too early to tell 100%. You know, I, I, I want to uh, kind of end on this question, then get some questions from people in the audience. Um, and then maybe if you have anything you want to talk about, we could talk about that too, of course. But um, my last kind of question here is, I want to give people a really strong carrot to get them to create content because I went like four years without creating any content. I don't know if you did the same thing, like if you started your agency before, or you just like started your agency this last two years or something. But I was I was, I started mine in 2018 and I didn't post anything online at all for those four years. Um, and I guess in a way that's kind of good because I did build up some authority, but the thing is like, I would have much rather started then, like in retrospect, I should have started way earlier. Um, like that's, that was a big mistake on my part. Uh, but I'm curious just to give people a carrot to get them to actually, you know, st start as soon as possible. How different is your life having the kind of following that you have? Like, Describe kind of what that looks like on the receiver side. Like, it, d d do you get a number, like way 10x more inquiries than you did before? I mean, like, what are some of the differences that you've noticed since having a following of the size so we can inspire people to go and create content, you know? Uh, okay, so for me, it was never about, well, it's, it's hard. Okay, so I just don't think stuff about why I should do them. I think about stuff, why not? Right, 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 right. right. So when people ask you, like, what's your passion? And I'm like, 
do you, is your passion business? I'm like, no, but why shouldn't I do this? So I'll right. give you some, some examples. Like, why not build a brand when in reality, like, or the leads you're going to get are going to be passive. They're going to be more grateful. They want to have you in. If you fly to any major city in the world, you can tweet, hey, guys, is anybody here? And they'll probably host you and buy you dinner. Yeah. If you ever want to, like, they'll treat you better because right. you have so much value. Like, everybody will act under self-interest. Like, mm. just just being real here. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be here if you didn't have anything to offer me. You right. wouldn't have asked <laughs> if I didn't have anything to offer you. Like, just being real. You know? No, yeah, that's true. That's true. And I feel like people miss out on a big, big network mm-hmm. because you're because you're not valuable enough in right. the beginning. So just by having that audience, you're already valuable. So automatically, there's a lot more people who would be willing to work with you. Right. So if I could put the carrot in one sentence, is a personal brand will make every single dollar you make easier to earn right why not right right that that's that's so true um i think that's where the yeah it's where the also the profit is you know i think a lot of ways because um i don't know if you experienced the same thing actually can you can you clarify real because i'm actually really curious what your journey was like especially with uh i know you have like your your brand side too you help people build these brands as like a service i believe so when did that get started? Did you have that before you started your Twitter journey where you're doing marketing or did you, did you just do like all of this at the same time when you got, when you jumped in? I did all of it at the same time in 2020. Before yeah. this, I was actually selling perfume door to door. Really? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I, nice. I my little plants and I just like squashed them, put some alcohol in the worst perfume. Could ever sell. <laughs> it was horrible and it stained your clothes and I, I literally scammed everyone who bought it from me because it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah. So you yeah. So that that's make that makes sense. Yeah, and the real for me, like the big thing that opened my eyes, and I really am grateful for this tweet by Lawrence King. Shout out. So mm-hmm. Lawrence tweeted uh, something about Gillette. So Gillette, you know, the razor company. Yeah. They have like over 130,000 followers. Right. And they get like three likes per post. Right? <laughs> so, so like Lawrence is sweet essentially said, Gillette social media manager is getting paid $80,000 a year to get three likes per post. <laughs> How much do you think they could pay you if you didn't suck at your job? <laughs> I'm like, well, I mean, that makes sense. Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's i'm like dude i should just pitch people so i just started sending out a lot of the like, hey i'll yeah. write for you hey i'll write for you i'll write for you so right. i said yes uh i was gonna charge him 750 bucks to write for him every month and then on the call i choked <laughs> so i charged him <laughs> 700 bucks oh. to write for me. <laughs> yeah. uh. so uh anyway he uh my pitch was so bad yeah he stopped me through in the middle of the pitch it's like dude you don't need to keep going uh it's cool <laughs> bucks. I'll, yeah that's fine like, oh, <laughs> that's so funny yeah i i had a similar story dude i i the first company i ever closed i was originally trying to sell them on some outrageous price like i just must have heard it from gary v i tried to sell it for like ten thousand dollars per month and then they worked me all the way down to uh five hundred dollars <laughs> per month oh my <laughs> Um, yeah, I just I had no confidence. Missed. Yeah, I had no confidence at that time. That was when I was like a senior in, in college and, and I had no understanding of sales and I just yeah, I didn't I didn't hold my my own. It was it was dumb. But but uh you know I, I think this is it's it's so interesting to hear kind of like your journey and I do think yeah that the brand I mean we went from when we hit two hundred thousand dollars per month in sales, I was spending twenty thousand dollars per month on advertising, right? Um but now that I do uh social and all this content i spend two grand to get 200 meetings which was about what we were doing before so it's crazy like the profit difference is so insane because you have a brand you know so like i that, i mean personally that's what i would encourage everyone to do is is, is build a brand as soon as possible because that's not going to go away and just by doing it by like getting in the habit of doing it you're standing out from like 99 percent of people because so many people are scared to do it they're like scared of being in front of people so like that's the best opportunity 
because if you can actually make it happen, then you're you're going to get more return than pretty much anyone else. Um, I do want to give you obviously an opportunity, JK. If, you, if there's anything you want to say or talk about before we go into questions, uh, if you want to, feel free to feel free to do it now. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Just for me, it's. I mean, you're gonna do business anyway. You're gonna be here anyway. You might as well make it permanently easier for you. Yeah. Well, a brand does that for you. Right. And um, but there's a lot of things you need to figure out in the beginning. And for me, if there's one thing that's worth buying in this world is speed and information. Right. So if you're an agency owner or coach making 10k a month or around there and we want to scale to 30 or 100k a month, then you can hit me up or go to tweetsandclients.com and you can check that out. But that's it. I'm glad to have right. questions for everybody here. Yeah, it's been great having you on, man. I could ask you um, a bunch of questions, but I want to I want to give other people the opportunity. And uh, we'll go at first with Dave, and then guys, we got J.K. Molina on the show. If you, if you weren't here at the beginning, I mean, he had one hundred and thirty. He has one hundred thirty thousand uh, Twitter followers. So I know I'm interested in asking him questions about how to grow my Twitter. Uh, if you guys have questions, now is the time to ask before um, it's over. So uh, anybody, anybody have anything they want to ask? Feel free to request it now, and I'll bring you up on the stage, Dave. You can go for it. I see you're, you're muted, so feel free to ask your question. You there? Yeah. So initially, I just requested... It's funny that you say 130,000, because that's what Gillette had when I started tweeting. Really? So yeah, <laughs> we, we passed Gillette, yo. <laughs> It's crazy. I mean, the whole, I mean, there's a really good, fr- sorry, Dave, I just want to, I want to mention this really quick. There's a really good um, point on this where uh, I was, uh, there's a podcast I listen to religiously called All In, the All In podcast. I listen to like every single episode and it's like number one in tech right now. And um, he, they, they, they basically mentioned how like the whole brand disruption is changing everything where like anybody can create a brand more powerful than these like multi-billion dollar conglomerates, you know? Um Pretty impressive stuff, man. So yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. So, uh, Dave, did you do you want to ask or I think we cut you off there? But do you have anything? Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to like maybe tell that is the, is the space is it recorded so that we can like maybe watch after us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's recorded. Did you have a question okay. about the uh, for JK or anything? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have a question. So the second question is that. For is that what's what do you do if you are consistently posting and then you are barely getting enough engagement? Like I know that it's advisable to just keep posting every day and stuff, but does it have to do with the algorithm? Because I actually have a friend that had his account so that he was barely reaching people, like people were barely engaging and he wanted to like create another account to test maybe it was because of the algorithm or his content or whatever so i wanted to ask a question about that that is it depending on the account or is it just content mainly how many tweets have you sent out tweets uh i think over a thousand all right well Okay, so it's two things. One is post and expect that nobody will see it. That'll like teach you detachment. Two is if you're just first starting out, tweeting more won't solve your problem. But creating a list of people who have the audiences you want and commenting under those people, that will probably solve it. Because you don't have the audience, so it can't, you know, you can't have the snowball effect if you have a snowball at the beginning. So just comment on other people and eventually they're going to start seeing you. All right. Yeah, that's a, that's a hundred percent true. Um, did you have another question, Dave, or is anyone else, anyone else have any questions for JK? Um, no. you know, thank you for the answer. You got it. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. Um, anybody else feel free to ask questions. Now's the time to do it. Uh, otherwise I got some questions for JK, but feel free to request. Okay. If you guys have anything, uh, feel free to request access now. Um, oh, Sprout. We got Sprout Eagle. Nice. I love that. I love that emoji. That's cool. 
Uh, all right, add you as a speaker, Sprout Eagle. Uh, we're ready to go. Let us know when you're connected. Okay, I see your speaker now. So Sprout, go for it. I think you just have to unmute yourself. There you go. You there? Uh, Sprout? All right, we're going to give you a second to work that out. But I actually have a question for JK. Sprout, hang on here for a sec. If you want to ask a question, uh, just stay on and we'll, we'll go back to you. But JK, what is the most, uh, what was the one tweet that had the most traction for you um, in, in the last two years uh, since posting? Or, yeah, that you remember? I mean, you mean money wise or engagement wise? I guess actually both, because I know you're pretty big on that subject. So maybe one that like made you the most money and one that had the most popularity. Yeah. The one that made me the most money was in was a giveaway actually. It was a case study I read after reading Russell Bronson's uh, book story offer. Yeah. So I, I had this really good uh, testimonial from this guy named Michael. Mm -hmm. He he actually wrote down that he made more money in ten days in the program than he made a month in his nine to five. And wow. I said, just replacing a nine to five in 10 days, let's go, right? So I just showed <laughs> like the step. Hey, just retweet this and I'll send you everything that Michael did. Yeah. And that just got a lot of people interested because I feel like, I don't know, maybe it was, it was a good hook, a good story, a good offer. So that was that. Right. And to me, I consider that one the most successful because likes and cash. But if you want to talk likes, it was a collection of hand-drawn illustrations, mm. visualized value style that showed stuff like uh, maybe it, it's like problem versus problem. Problem or like problem versus your perception of the problem. Right. And the problem is like a little circle and the perception of the problem is like a huge circle. Right. So it was like illustrations that try to prove certain points right. that, I, that I just drew by hand and do, did a thread on it. So there you go. Oh, see, I, I didn't plan this, but the one that made the most money, AutoDM. The one that got the most engagement, Thread. Those are the two types mm. of content as of today that um, performed the best on Twitter. Okay, very, very good to know. And now we got some more people up here. So Sprout, I'm gonna give you another chance right now. Is, is your mic working? If not, we're gonna have to move on to Tristan. He was next in line. All right, we're gonna have to move on to Tristan. Sprout, feel free to hang on if you want to, but Tristan, what's your question? Hey guys, really enjoying the, the uh, spaces. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so, thank um, you, man. I, yeah, my question is like at the beginning of your audience building um, journey where you don't really have a niche necessarily like um, formulated or you're still thinking through what your what your direction is, how do you um, target specific people that you know in the future are going to be valuable to you versus going broad and maybe collecting uh, following that, that isn't? entirely useful uh eventually oh i'm glad that you asked this because i did a training on this yesterday so it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay good so um two things right so uh for me one <clears throat> is you gotta get like a good idea of who the market you're going for is and then you're going to get a few and you need to choose from that few. So I'm going to show you how I would do it. Okay. So number one is big three are health, wealth relationships, right? And most people can already find which one they are in. And then after you find health, wealth relationships, you niche down three levels. So let me explain to you how that would work for me. It's wealth. Okay. So wealth niche down one level, agency owners and coaches niche down another level making 10K a month, niche down another level on Twitter. So that is my niche for now. I could give you another example. Let's say it's it's a, it's fitness, right? So it's, uh, that's health. So health is number one. Niche down one level for pregnant mothers or for mothers. Niche down another one for pregnant mothers. Niche down another one that are like um, after they got their birth, right? So they're like, they have that need, right? So that's another niche. So you pick one of the big three, you niche down three levels. And after that, you're going to have a bunch of options. So here's how I choose the one that is the best. Now, when you do this, you're going to want to be right. 
and you're gonna be like, yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I just wanna pick the right one so I'm not wrong. And to me, that's not the right way to look at it, because in business, there's no such thing, in my opinion. Instead of, well, it depends if you do unethical stuff or not, but there is no such thing as wrong. It's only right or more right. So just know that you'll be fine, right? You don't need to get it perfectly because every market could be optimized. But it is important that you choose one, and here's how you choose it. So there's four components to a really good market. It's easy to target. It's growing. It has a pain. And most importantly, has purchasing power. They can buy from you. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. Growing, pain, purchasing power, and um, what was the other one? Hold on. Money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's purchasing power. So there was another one. Is uh, let me pull my notes. Ah, there you go. It's uh, easy to target. So pain, uh, growing, purchasing power, uh, easy to target. Okay. So after that is you take those four categories, right? And then you write down the your, the options you have. So it's like maybe if you're doing fitness, it could be pregnant moms, high level executives, and burnt out college athletes, right? And then per one of these four you rank them from one to 10. Like where are they on the scale from one to 10? So on a pain from one to 10, growing one to 10, purchasing power one to 10, easy to target one to 10, and then you add them. In the end, I pick the one with the highest score. So that's how I picked my niche. It's not the best framework out there. It's completely bro science and completely made up. Plus if it helps you, then it, it helped me. So it could help you. Yeah, cool. So it, is that the uh, the framework you take going into it? Or do you evolve that as you get like a little bit of traction and you and you feel get feel the audience? First thing I do is analyze like, what's my skill? So I would think like you like, what is your skill? And after that, that's like, you, you, you derive from that. Because if you do something that you're not skilled at, then you're not gonna enjoy it. It's gonna be like, ah, it's, it's like kind of weird. But I would recommend just picking one thing that's really niche and then go broad. Because when you're confident at one thing, people assume that you're confident in many things. So if you're really good at one thing, then when you go broader, it'll be easier for you. Cool, yeah, okay, thanks for that. You got it. It's great having you up here, yeah, Tristan yeah. Sprout. Oh, you got, you got your mic working, great. That, that, that was an opportunity, go for it. So, can I talk now, please? Yes, go for it, go for it, go for it. All right. Um, after finding something confusing about growing your personal brand, and then here is it: when growing your personal brand, is it advisable you, apart from tweeting consistently, showing up, attending spaces, tweeting threads, is it advisable to um, engage people via the DMs, people you do not know but you just want to like start a conversation with them? Is it, is it something advisable when growing your personal brand? Yeah, because you're growing a network. And if you do a different approach than other people, I feel like it's going to be helpful for you. So most people, their DMs are like a, a big accounts have like three types. It's usually people hating on you. It's usually people loving you or it's people who want something from you. So it's a good idea to not do those. So, oh, okay. Sure but, how so, okay. How would you? How would you? What, what would be a better approach? You know, going to people's DMs and sending them the message because you would not want to sell to them for the very first time. So, what would have been a better approach from your own experience? What are four things? Either make them smarter, make them money, make them laugh, or you ask an intelligent question. Thank you. I got it. Nice. Got it. Anybody sure, else sure, sure. have any? Uh, anybody else have any questions uh, for JK? Uh, we only got twenty minutes left, so want to make sure you guys get your questions in before we wrap up here. Um, if not, I, I do also have some questions as well. Uh, oh, Jim, we got we got Jim. All right, Jim, growth marketing. Uh, we're gonna pull you up here. Okay. So I just add you as a speaker. Once you connect, uh, feel free to shoot your question over to JK. You connected? You good? Can you hear us? 
Uh, hey, JK and Lucas, can you guys hear me? Yes. What's up? Cool, what's up, guys? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of ask JK about, like, his journey from, like, going, like you said, doing door-to-door sales to kind of getting started on Twitter. And, like, maybe you can kind of break down what, like, your one or two big breaks were or what you really felt like led to that rocket ship success coming from, like, maybe, like, a non-traditional marketing background. Yeah. Uh, uh, there, there was a good tweet the other day that said, when you ask people what, and I don't consider myself like wildly successful, I had some success, right? But when you ask successful people what worked, it's really hard to answer because you tried so much shit that you literally don't know. Like, you shot so many bullets, you don't know which one hit the target. But if I, like, could try to, like, nail it, it could be that I chose something that wasn't a chore for me to do. It's not a chore for me to get on Twitter and tweet every day because I enjoy it so much. But it is a chore for some people, right? Uh, I have engineer friends that love coding. I fucking hate coding. And I used to be a software engineer. Well, I used to study software engineer. I'm not a software engineer. But it was that I picked something that I never really got tired of. That was one. And two is I try to really find like two to three people on online that are exceptional. Right? And I just follow 99% of the things of the things they tell you to do verbatim. That's been very, very helpful. So for me, it's Bronson, Formosi, Bronson and Formosi, mostly. And like, if they say it, I'm like, yeah, that's true. So I just do it, right? I never really listen to a lot of people because then if you listen to everyone, you end up doing nothing. So I really follow uh, the advice of like, only a few exceptional people. And I have over 1,500 people muted, over 1,000 people blocked. And I do think that's really been very helpful. So those two things really helped me. No, I think that's that's actually like amazing insight. Um, kind of like at the beginning of your journey, what would you say maybe got you like those first 1,000 or so followers? Because I feel like that's, you know, that's where I'm at. And that's where obviously like a lot of people listening might be too. When, when I switched from, when I, when I understood like kind of word of mouth and like how people like talk. So like when you come in under, like if you're below one or 2K followers, the best way for you to go is either pay for retweets, right? Or if you could uh, engage with other people, right? So engaging with other people, what most people do is they are sometimes aggressive. They're just not helpful or they're just not, I don't know. It, it, it's just weird comments. It's just a weird social vibe. It feels like they want to get something from it. So what I understood that big accounts are just, are just people. And I try to actually form a relationship with them with not asking for them for anything. They started helping me out. So it makes sense to look at it that way. They're just people. And if you give them something, you give them 10 favors, they'll eventually give you one. That one they gave you super useful. So in my opinion, it would be just engage with people who have the audience you want, but don't try to get anything from them. You know, just do it because you can add something to the conversation and just don't be rude. Awesome. Thanks, JK. I really appreciate you, know, you coming on this uh, this live. You got it. Awesome. We have uh, TMU. Uh, I'm going to add you up right now. Uh, ask a question to JK. Uh, let me know if you're connected and all good. Um, that was a great answer, man. I'm super excited to hear the rest of these questions. Uh, Tammy, you got, Hi. yeah, go for it. Go for it. Ask your question. JK. Um, my question is, Hi JK, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. My question is that, um, you know the advice that if you want to make money fast and easily, you need to go ultra specific with your niche from your bow, then offer. But um, what is your advice for people that are just starting out? Like, you know, results. There were from the beginning. There's like two problems that are like red flags for you that I feel like they're not gonna help you, which is fast and easy. It's not fast. And it's not easy. Uh, so from the beginning, just fix that. 
just assume that it's going to take 10 years. But if I could really nail like, one piece of advice is find somebody who's like two or three steps ahead of you. Not somebody who's 10 steps ahead of you. Like for me in the beginning, listening to you know, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Warren Buffett didn't do shit. But listening to people who were making, like if I was making zero, somebody was making 10K a month, that was very, very helpful. I would focus on people who are a few steps ahead of you, follow what they say. Once you get to the level you graduate, you go to another two or three steps ahead of you and follow what they say. The big key here is to choose well. Who are you going to actually follow to do these things? And yeah, so it's not fast, it's not easy. I assume it's going to take 10 years. It's not, but once you get there, you're going to be happier because you thought in a longer time frame. And just find a few people you find exceptional just do what they say just try just just you know what i said before like you just try so much shit that you don't know which one worked like i used to sell i used to sell videos on social skills on twitter that was my first product and uh yeah that, was, that didn't go anywhere but it taught me a lot because that's how i made my first landing page you know that's my first piece of copy that i was trying out so you eventually do so much shit and everything just clicks, but it won't click if you want it fast and easy because you won't have enough to experiment with. Right. Right. Great answer. Great answer. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, thank you so much Timmy, for coming up and asking yours. Uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, again, otherwise I'm going to ask some as well, but now's your time. We only got 12 minutes left. So if you want to ask a direct question about how to hit 130,000 Twitter followers, now is the time. Okay, now more time, bro. There's nothing a 997,000 invoice can't fix. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, oh, we got 20. Oh, great. Another, another, another good, uh, another good uh, uh, handle. We got 20 money asking a question. I love that. 20 money. All right. What's your question for JK? 20 money? Hey, what's, the, what's your favorite software that you use? What's your go to? Oh, wait, um, I think, <laughs> I think he accidentally removed himself, uh, from the hosting. Hey. Okay. Just ask him when he come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, weird. Uh, must've, must've dropped out. Um, oh no, you're here. You're here. JK is here. I think he just like accidentally popped out. I'm going to add him back. Uh, I know Twitter spaces can be a little buggy sometimes. Um, but uh, JK just added you as a co-host, invited you to speak. You should be good now. Are you back up here? Let's see. I'll send you another speaker request. Um, okay, can you hear me, JK? Okay. Um, well, we're going to be working that out real quick. See what happened with the uh, speaking. Uh, okay. Well, while he's getting in there, I just wanted to kind of like talk through some of the things that I learned from that, uh, specifically also talking maybe about what has been working for me in terms of uh, kind of looking at people like JK and seeing what they've been doing on Twitter and kind of want to do a little bit of a debrief on some of the things he said. So I think for you guys, when it comes to um, applying some of this, I, I, I think the key takeaways for me were uh, listening to him talk about the threads he's doing and then also how there's a difference between auto DMs and threads. Um, personally, for me, I, I also had some smaller success with doing the auto DMs and those definitely work. And so if you guys can, oh, JK, you're back up. I think we're good. Back, dude, uh, okay. Out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. That's weird. Uh, yeah, I know Twitter Spaces is buggy. So um, thanks for thanks for getting back up here. Twenty money. To, uh, you asked your favorite software, right? That was your question. Yeah, what's his, what's his favorite software? You... Yeah, JK. What's your answer? What's my favorite software? Yeah, except well, maybe maybe not your own, I guess, or, or <laughs> is that you? <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> well, you could say actually. Let's talk about that though. Let's 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 sit on that for a sec. So, you st did you? How did that go down with Tweet Hunter? So you started it, or you came into it, or how did it work? Yeah, um, I 
I was, I did not start Tweet Hunter. That was Thomas and Thibaut. Uh-huh. So they created this product and that was very similar to the way I wrote, which was getting inspiration from other people. And right. they sent me a, a code for me to try it free for a month. And I looked at it and I was like in love with product. I was like, Dude, this is it. This is it. And then I told them, you know what? Screw the code. I want to be partners on this. Like, let's make it happen. I had around 30,000 followers or 25,000 followers. And they were just starting out. So it, it made sense because I had right. an audience, no product. They had product, no audience. Yeah. So we partner up on around August or September. And uh, we went to like 14K MRR from the launch. And then it was like, all right, go time. So we just started doing it like that. That's crazy. Oh, so you, they were at a dead. They were at a dead start. Like they hadn't even launched uh, before. Were, was anyone using the product when when you came on, or was it just like just starting? I'm unsure. Yeah. That. Maybe maybe a few people. Right. Not, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Right. Well, basically, it was. It sounded like it was a match made in heaven. It sounded like it's worked out pretty well. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. It's awesome. I love the thing. <laughs> um, that's fantastic. Uh, well, I know we could definitely get into that. I actually have some questions around that. I know a lot of people want to build uh, software or courses, and so we could talk about that. But before we do, does anyone have any last questions here for JK? Again, we only have eight minutes left. So, uh, yeah, even the people who've already asked a question, if you want to ask another question, feel free to. So, Jim, I saw you just raised your hand. So if you have a question, again, feel free to ask another one if you want. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Lucas. Um, so what I was really wondering is, like, we're kind of talking about what worked in the past for JK and what you've seen to get success now. But I'm sure as you guys know, like the social media, like it's always changing and like the platforms seem to be changing at an even quicker pace now. And I feel like what's in, in vogue per se, like on Twitter is like the auto DMs and the auto responders. And that's kind of like where we are currently, but as like someone that's like such a Twitter expert, where would you see like the next one to three years? for like um, Twitter growth going? Like if you just feel like it's going in any certain direction or any other trends that you're identifying kind of early on, just be curious to hear about that. I'm not confident enough in telling you what will change, but I'm comfortable enough in telling you what I think won't change. So what I think won't change is finding people who have the audience you want like tapping into their tapping into them, doing favors for people who have the audience you want, like collecting goodwill. So by the time you ask a favor, you've already done 10 for them. That won't change. By the way, this is all verbatim traffic secrets from Brunson. Super good book, recommended. But I don't see how Twitter is going to change. From now, I I see that some threads are starting to die out a little bit, but it. I always get it wrong. So I, I really don't know my net. I can tell you what the next big bet is, is YouTube because mm. tweets are really cool. Right? Like they, but they die off. Like if I tweeted something a year ago, there's like zero chance to see it. But if I posted something a year ago on YouTube, then probably it'll pop up because that's more evergreen. So my next play is YouTube. Uh, yeah. Mm. That's fascinating. I mean, I have so many questions around that, but I think I want to give Mishka, she was uh, just requesting to ask a question. And I think this might be our last question just because we have five minutes left. Uh, and uh, maybe actually before Mishka's question, JK, is there anything you want to leave the audience with as a final parting note? It's been great having you on the show and I think a lot of people benefited from it. So, Well, thank you for having me. And yeah, so if you are below 10K a month, you want to get to 10K a month, Go to likesaintcash.com. If you're at 10 a month and want to get to 30 and 100, go to tweetsandclients.com. And if not, then you don't have to do that. I'll still keep posting good stuff on my Twitter and my YouTube. So uh, you can check it out if you want. At JK Molina. At one JK Molina. What if you're over 100 and you're trying to get to a million a month? <laughs> <clears throat> well, then that is very simple, bro. You should just quite simply adopt me. <laughs> i might i might man yeah that's uh that might we might have to talk about that offline but uh mishka <laughs> i'll give you a chance i just want to say to everyone thank you so much for being on the show and uh, listening the twitter ama spaces format is really fun for me personally and i, I really like having them 
We, today was a little bit of an exception because I wanted to work around uh, JK's schedule. I know he's got a, a tight schedule, but typically we do these Wednesdays at 12 p.m. PST. So just mark that on your calendar. I'll be putting the next one out here that we'll be doing for next week. Uh, feel free to hop in. And if you think anyone would like to see this or listen to this, feel free to retweet, share it. We're just trying to increase the size of the community uh, and really help as many agency owners scale as possible. So feel free to share it, like it, retweet it, all that jazz. If you think it was valuable, give some love to JK. Um, I, I hear, I'm hearing a lot of virtual claps. So uh, Mishka, let's, uh, let's ask your question and then we'll wrap up here. Uh, maybe we can squeeze in one more, but Mishka, what's your question? Thank you, Lucas. Hi, JK. So I have been watching your YouTube videos lately and in one of those you were mentioning about you know, like buying paid repeats and starting to grow account. So I wanted to know that apart from DMing those people on Twitter, is there any other way that we can reach out to them? I tried reaching out to two to three people with large followings, but I think my DMs would always go unnoticed since it would go in message requests. This is a sensitive topic, but uh, find your email and three isn't enough. Send more. I would send like a hundred and then decide. Okay, got it. And another question was that uh, while I was going through tweets and trying to your website, I wanted to know that uh, is the coaching program only for those who are at least making 10K a month MRR? It is. Got it. Thank you. You got it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, okay. Any, we can, we can, we have time for one more question. If anyone has one more question they want to ask, otherwise we're going to wrap things up here. All right. Uh, JK, anything you want to add just to, to finish it off? Like, say, cash. Like, say, cash. Like, say, cash, guys. Um, so I, I see actually Drac, Drac has one a question. So I, I know 20 money, you, you hadn't had one already. So I want to see if I can get Drac in here. Um, Drac, you, you want to ask your question just to tie this thing off? What's up, guys? Hey, um, hey hopefully you can hear me? Yes, hey. yes. Uh, first off, thank you for hosting this. This is freaking awesome. So many gems dropped. Glad it's being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm veering into content marketing and management, and I was curious from your guys' perspectives, because um, I know you're both kind of veering in this direction. What are you looking for? in a content, uh, content manager yourselves? That's a good question. JK, you want to answer? Well, I'll tell you what I looked at my YouTube content manager, what I told them. I feel like a lot of people are either good in like writing or video, right? In terms of content, because it's like writing, everybody goes to Medium, Quora, Twitter, LinkedIn, video, it's like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. So I'm good at the writing part, not so good at the video part. So I told my content manager, like, dude, like, I'm going to record stuff, but I want you to handle everything. I just don't even want to log in. So there's that aspect. Two is I want you to tell me what to do. So analyze good videos from people in my niche, which videos from me have been performing higher than the others, and tell me what you want me to write content on so that I won't have to dedicate a lot of hours to this every week. For me, that was the biggest thing. Like him taking off that side of the business so I don't have to think. I can just hit record and forget about it. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, I'll say just a you know, to as a final note, um, yeah, it, it definitely is so important to have a content manager in general, just like taking that step. I just look for someone who's kind of like if you're familiar with the film industry, there's a a, a role called the assistant director and uh they kind of keep everyone on task. And um, that's kind of how I think of my content manager is I just want someone who's going to make sure everything goes out on time. Because when you start to produce a lot of content, because we're producing so much content, like LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, TikTok, YouTube, like every day, there's probably like 20 pieces of content going out. Um, it's like a machine, you have to actually make sure that machine is still running, you know. So that's what I kind of look for. Uh, if that's helpful at all. But JK, it's 9 a.m. Uh, and I know it costs one billion dollars for people to get another hour of your time. So uh, <laughs> if you guys want to uh, take it off, I'm just kidding. You can, you can hit him up uh, if you want to work with him. But um, 
thank you all for being on the show. Really appreciate it. And uh, until next time, next Wednesday, 12 p.m. PST, mark your calendars. Don't be late. Uh, we'd love to see you guys there. Thank you all. Thank you, JK. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Goodbye, guys. Bye.